Hi, my name is Sean Walker, and I'm part of the product success team here at ServiceNow. Today I'm going to be taking you through a demo of the asset onboarding playbook that was added in the Vancouver release of Enterprise Asset Management. Asset onboarding is a structured process that allows asset managers to ensure important asset attributes are being recorded when an asset is being deployed. The playbook experience can be triggered by the asset management team either during the request and deployment process or manually when deploying assets from inventory. Playbook tasks can only be closed when all activities are complete, ensuring no important attributes are missed. The key use cases for the asset management playbook are when adding new assets. The playbook provides asset managers with a wizard-like steps to populate all of the information. Key information such as warranty expiration dates, adding assets to maintenance contracts, service contracts, and maintenance plans, updating the asset risk values if it differs than the default model risk, and completing fields like managed by, owned by, department, and depreciation. To support asset onboarding, a new table has been created, which extends the asset onboarding table. On the Enterprise Asset table, a new field has been added to track the onboarding status. It's a Boolean field, which is set to false by default. There are two ways the asset onboarding task can be triggered. The first is automatically. A new task has been added to the asset request flow, which will create onboarding tasks after the asset has been received. The second is by triggering the onboarding task manually. Asset managers can use the onboard asset button to create onboarding tasks and trigger the playbook experience. The task must be triggered by a user with the enterprise asset manager role and the asset must be in one of the following states. Build, in use, in maintenance, or in stock, available, reserved, pending install, or pending transfer. Now I'll jump into an instance and demonstrate the onboarding playbook. I've now logged into uh, an enterprise asset management in the Vancouver instance, and I'm going to show you how the asset onboarding gets triggered automatically as part of the request and fulfillment. So if I navigate to asset operations and requests, I can take a look at some requests that have been submitted by our end users for enterprise assets. This request has already been approved and it's going to go through the source request. So we're going to open up the source request to source the enterprise asset. We click on source request and we can see that there are 49 available in local stock. So we are going to consume one. Once that is done, we can go back and take a look at the requested item. <clears throat> now that it's been fulfilled, we can go to the deployment tasks. So after the enterprise asset has been confirmed, that will start the deployment, and therefore also all the onboarding tasks. So I'm going to close this task, and we will see that two new tasks have been completed, one to deploy the asset and another to onboard the asset. So I'm going to walk you through the onboarding asset task. Open up the asset onboarding task, click on the playbook tab, which will start the playbook experience. The first step is to review the details of the asset. Since this asset was already in stock, a lot of the information like the serial number and asset tag have already been input for this asset. But I do want to make sure that we update the warranty date. So I would reference my purchasing information to find out what the warranty expiration was. In this case, I'm just going to select a, a different uh, date, any date out in the future. 
and I'm going to mark this as complete. We're not doing RFID tagging in this example, but you could also enter any RFID tags. Once I've marked it as complete, it'll move on to the next step. So I want to review the responsible parties. <clears throat> I can pick the date it was assigned. I can determine what the asset function was, whether it's a primary asset or secondary. I can choose which department that this asset belongs to. And I can also select a company and mark this as step as complete. Now we look at who's responsible for supporting this asset. So we can take a look perhaps at the support group or supported by, sorry, we can look over the support group and say, we're gonna say this is supported by our enterprise asset management group. There they are, Technicians West and potentially managed by a specific person. So this request was for Allison. So we'll make Allison the managed by. And we can mark this as complete. Now we take a look at maintenance plans. So this asset is already part of an existing maintenance plan. So in this case, if I needed to create or add a new maintenance plan, I could open up the maintenance plans and create a new maintenance plan. But since this is already part of a maintenance plan, I don't need to follow through this. I can just close this up. And since it has the maintenance plan, all market is complete. Now I can also at this time, same thing as a maintenance plan, create new maintenance contracts that may apply to this particular asset. In this case, we can already see that the asset is part of a maintenance contract. So I can mark it as complete. You can also do things like creating new warranty contracts if those exist. Again, clicking on the open contracts will open up the contracts to allow you to create a new maintenance contract or warranty contract, sorry. In this case, I'm not going to add one and I'm just going to skip this. Uh, if there's any service contracts for that particular asset, again, they would display here or you can create that. In this case, again, I'm going to skip this particular step. Each one of the tasks in the onboarding playbook does need to either be marked as complete or skipped if it's not applicable. Uh, this is a purchased asset, so I'm not going to have any corresponding lease contracts. So I'm going to skip this one as well. Now this is where you can override the risk rating for this particular asset. So potentially this particular asset is a higher value. Um, it will take the default risk values from the model, but we can see in this case, the model didn't have any risk associated with it. So we're going to set a risk for this particular asset and say it is a medium risk of failure Failure likelihood is low, and which will give it a failure risk score. And we're going to mark this as complete. <clears throat> and next, that lets you do things like set the depreciation. So if you have a particular depreciation schedule, say straight line 10 years, when is your depreciation effective from? And is there any salvage value to this asset? And once that's done, we can mark it as complete. And now all of the playbook tasks have been complete. So I can close the asset onboarding task. So one of the other ways you can trigger the asset onboarding would be directly from an asset record. So I'm going to take a look at the same model we were just looking at. So I'm going to open up the model and take a look at some of those assets. So say we are deploying an asset directly from inventory. It hasn't come through the request process. And I can see here 
we've got quite a few in stock. I go through the stock and decide that I want to onboard this particular asset record. I can now trigger the same playbook experience by selecting onboard asset. And this is going to create the onboarding task for you and trigger the playbook experience. I won't run you through all of the different steps, but this is exactly the same steps that you would run through when the onboard and asset um, flow has been triggered um, from the request of fulfillment. And that completes the review of the onboarding tasks for Enterprise Asset Management. If you'd like more information on Enterprise Asset Management and the Asset Onboarding task, you can visit the ServiceNow product documentation site, docs.servicenow.com, or visit the Enterprise Asset Management ServiceNow community, where there's an Asset Management, Enterprise Asset Management welcome guide. There's also several customer stories like lifecycle management of medical assets and improving medical and IT asset management. Thank you very much for your time.